G'day folks. Well, for this afternoon's autopsy number two, we have a tubular underwater motor. It's a submersible tubular axial drive motor. It's made by Becker, Germany. It's a Becker Scuba Drive R203G. Uh, these ones have limit switches and things built into them. This came out of a pull cover roller that we tore out at my work. We replaced it with a much newer modern system using a uh, competitor's motor but immediately I can tell this didn't fail because of manufacturing defect. Now there have been some issues with these motors drowning in the past where casings fail or seals fail but this one here you can see where someone set the drill stop too deep when they were drilling clench plates on the roller because the roller is a stainless steel tube that fits over these UHMW uh, plastic bosses, umpy bosses, and they've been drilling clench plates to attach straps to the pull cover and they've gone too deep and you can see where it's eventually cracked through because if I position this right water will start weeping out of that hole. That's an unusual one though. That's not a uh, installer error though. So there's two potential failure points but that one's definitely weeping, that one's not. But either way, these motors have had issues in the past, but this one here is way past that point, and uh, yeah, it's basically just rubbish. So it's 24 volt, 200 newton meter, 163 watts. They're a fairly decent motor. They're a pain in the ass to set up when it comes to controls compared with the uh, competitor. I'm not going to name the competitor, but yeah, they are a bit of a pain. It takes seconds to set up one of the uh, competitors' models because they use a very small digital PLC in their power supply, whereas these ones here took a lot longer. So I've got to get this adapter shaft off, get this annulus off. Uh, I'll take that annulus off as well, three screws and knock it off. And should be good to go, get, it, get the uh, saws all out and cut the ends off and try and split it apart. Probably won't be easy, but it's worth a try. <laughs> And because it's full of water, it's going to be awfully nasty inside. A real mess. But I'm still curious as to what's uh, what's inside there. You know, it says IP68. That's the uh, waterproof, dustproof rating. And that's the power supply that would have run one of these. I'm not sure if it's the same one, but it's uh, identical to what they run. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these thrown in the bin as well. Yeah, scuba drive E control unit. It's got a ballast resistor or something on the back. I know these things get hot. They do get quite hot, especially when they're not they're unhealthy. Knock all the screws and things out of it. Yeah, so you got limit switch plugs, main DC plug, and so on. There's, there's more than a few wires in here actually. Yeah, there's main DC wires, which are these two. And then there's limit switches. There's one there which has been cut off, probably disused. But there should be an inner and outer limit switch. And then you've got to use these to program it. Can't remember what that does. It's a potentiometer, but I can't remember it. They do have a nice rectifier and cap in them though. It's a Nippon Chemicon 50 volt. 22,000 microfarad cap. They're worth keeping. Um, that's about it. Rectifier and that, they come off. The rest of it goes in the bin. And I'll keep the plastic enclosures for uh, other experiments. So, yeah, let's start cutting. Actually, no. Take, yeah, take the bushings and the uh, annulus off. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting to find that inside. I was expecting it to be more like the uh, competitors' models where it's all exposed, but this is just a uh, regular tubular motor. They've just encased it. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I've used these on uh, overdeck out-of-water mounts before, but they just put it inside a pipe. <laughs> interesting thing is, where the stresses are in the plastic, it's actually less likely to have leaked there 
and more likely to have leaked there but that's where the moisture was coming from so it still comes down to an installer error but yeah on the end there's a um, cap you knock that out and you can charge it with about 5 psi of nitrogen there's a little Schrader tyre valve in there stainless steel tyre valve so once this annulus is off which it's not coming off it's expanded and stuck on there but once that's off you can uh, pressurize the tube with five pounds of nitrogen but that's just an empty tube that's the drive end the drive dog it fits in to a coupling at the very bottom of the tube down the black hole um, yeah so there should be splines on there I'll take the cap screw off and that'll just be a spline to drive but yeah this is a uh, this is the motor part there's probably some electronics up here yeah, you can see the inspection hole through it and that's a planetary gearbox sort of like a big cordless drill gearbox essentially the same thing it's just a giant glorified cordless drill gearbox now I've got to get this drive coupling off this end uh, how do they normally do it well normally it's a pin a sliding key a key fits in and then you pull up put a um, hood pin through an R clip and uh, that holds it in place but I don't know how they've done it with this one it's a bearing race there's two two big bearing races yeah. So that's the drive end of course that turns the tube the rest of this is just a lazy bearing that'll turn independently of the motor I'll figure out a way to get this off probably with a sawzall and a lot of hammering <laughs> let's demolish it and that was the adapter bushing that's normal that goes over the end there with a the key in it if you watch the uh, high-speed TV shoot there's a nice slow motion film of one of these going careening into a plasma TV <laughs> they weigh about two kilos they make good ammo useless now completely obsolete and a hell of a way over complicated when it comes to machining you got to try and turn turn the OD turn the 38 mil step drill it all bore that out for the cable and then EDM burn in a key slot using an electrical discharge machine center they're expensive to make but then people paid fortune for these pool covers so you know, well, <laughs> if you're willing to pay for it a bit of water still in there yeah bit of evil evil water running out okay well that was easy it came off halfway through cutting it I don't think I even had to cut it it just slid straight off there's two bearing races an inner and an outer and three seals like a labyrinth seal and a couple of lip seals and they also look like they're dependent on gas pressure from behind so as soon as you lose the five pounds of pressure in here water will just flood through the damn thing they are grease or separated with grease but still that's a mess a rather nasty crunchy bearing race it's all rubbish everything's junk on this one <laughs> I mean, even after we pulled it out, it's been sitting in the storage yard at work for the last tw for 12 months or so. And it's been sitting full of water for quite a while. Anyway, I'll try and get these uh, spline drive screws, torque screws out, and uh, see if I can actually split this apart. Not much of a motor, but it does its job. Okay, well that's the coupling end, output end. Looks like it's even got threads on it for some of some other application. But, yeah, they're not really corroded considering they had 24 volts across them. Unless they had the power supply unplugged at the time. Normally this will sit here with 24 volts across it and just keep going. But, yeah, nice bit of bronze. <laughs> Make a bit of projectile or something. But there's a motor in there. But, take these screws out, take the uh, gear head off it and try and strip the rest of it. Alright, well that didn't, didn't take too much to get it apart and despite being full of water for more than a year it's actually pretty good it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it works if I clean it up but I think this motor's pressed together so it's going to be a uh, 
destructive autopsy, splitting it apart. But from the connection end, it looks like we've got a inductor. There's two relays in there, forward reverse relay, some diodes, uh, some kind of semiconductor, transistor or something, more diodes and bits. That's a electromagnetic break. That ribbon cable goes to the hole sensors which tell it how many RPMs it's done and start and stop it accordingly. So it has a open and close limit switch built in. There's no need for mechanical limit switch boxes and things. Uh, the motor itself, it's a bit hard to tell. Mm. Mostly illegible, most of the markings were laser engraved and now they corroded off. But either way, I'll try and split this apart and we'll have a closer look. Alright, well, the control electronics are dead, but let's see what happens when we put power straight to the motor. <laughs> this thing might do something, assuming the brushes aren't stuck or dissolved. Oh, it's working. I think the brake's stuck on. Yeah, the brake's not connected, so the brake's actually loading it up. <laughs> Turned over far enough to unplug itself. Yeah, the brake pad's nice and hot now. <laughs> it goes to show it still worked. But the control electronics wouldn't. The relays are full of water. Oh, let's see how much more I can break off this. Take that nut off the end. <laughs> Poor old thing. Okay, well after a bit of hammering and a few bolts out, it's essentially just a big glorified power drill motor. Oh, a little DC motor. They're all the same anyway. Two magnetic poles, permanent magnets. Two brushes. Yep, very standard. The gearbox is tight as hell though. So there's something horrible going on inside there. Anyway, I'll clean up most of this and strip that down next and that'll be the end of it. I'll clean up in here and... Uh, yeah, it's starting to look better anyway. <laughs> I've still got a pile of monitors and other stuff to play with, but that'll be later. <laughs> yeah, and that's the little hall sensor card that came off it. Not really much to it. And the brake. I tried to undo the nut and actually split the whole end off the thing, so that was a lot easier than I was expecting. Yeah badly damaged, not worth keeping. Alright, this is the end of the road for this one. That's a multi-stage planetary gearbox, just like a cordless drill but bigger. You got a fixed stator gear, several planet gears and several four sun gears. Going in, transmit, reduction again, drive, reduction, drive, reduction, it's basically turning like 2,000 RPM into 5 or 6. Yeah, it's pretty incredible how well they work and they do it pretty good. But yeah, that's just a uh, planetary gearbox set. Very low speed, but it's a bit of a mess. Not really worth keeping as such. It could be cleaned up and used again, but the thing is, I've got to work out the input for it. Well, the input is the motor shaft with, with its own sun gear attached. No, not worth the trouble. 
But there you go, that's the input and output of the gearbox. That's the output shaft. If you want to adapt something, you've got to EDM it, burn it out with an EDM. It's usually, usually what I do at work. Messy. <laughs> A mixture of grease and pool water. Anyway, that's the end of that one. Thanks for watching. I think it's about to rain actually. It's getting awful dark up there. I'll clean up, put tools away, wait for rain. Hmm, <laughs> pile of dead everything.